Over the past four months, the only cryptocurrency that I've been buying is Ethereum. And after countless hours of research, I've truly come to believe that owning Ethereum is the best risk-weighted crypto investing play right now, especially given what's about to happen over the next six to 12 months. So in today's video, I'm gonna share why Ethereum has become my highest conviction crypto investment by breaking down the three main reasons why I'm bullish on Ethereum and what I plan to do with my ETH investment in the future, including even if there's a market correction or a crash. Also, a quick thank you to Newton, who is the sponsor of today's video, but more on that later. So Ethereum is gonna transition from proof of work to proof of stake this year with something called the merge. Now, I'm not gonna get into the technical specifics of it here, but let me just say that it is happening and it's gonna have major positive effects on Ethereum that I don't think are priced in right now because they're not fully understood. And so there's three things that I wanna talk about today. Three major reasons why I'm bullish on the future of Ethereum that have to do with the economics, the security, and the sustainability of the platform. Let's get into it. All right, so when it comes to the economics of Ethereum, as with anything else, there's two sides of the equation, supply and demand. Now let's start by looking at demand and let me throw some stats at you. For starters, let's look at the number of unique addresses on the Ethereum network. And you can see that it's been steadily trending upwards over the last couple of years and has almost reached the 200 million mark. Now, that doesn't tell you the whole picture, so let's go a little bit deeper. This is the number of active Ethereum addresses that are actively using the network, and you can see that it's also having a clear and steady upwards trend. Another metric that serves as a proxy for demand on the network is the number of transactions that are happening, and you can also see a clear and steady upward trend over the past few years. But even more interesting than the number of daily active users or the number of transactions is the number of applications that are being built on the network, because that shows what the future potential could be if people start using those apps and it becomes much more widespread in terms of its adoption. And on that front, the numbers also look exceptional. Now this dotted line shows the growing number of dApps or decentralized apps on the Ethereum network. And these purple bars show the number that are created in any given month. So for example, in November last year, 72 new dApps were created on Ethereum. Another cool demand stat is the number of developers that actually want to build stuff on the network because if people aren't building on it, then of course in the future there aren't gonna be more users and the network might slowly die out. Well, if we look at the number of crypto dev packages, which is what developers download in order to start building an application on a platform, and if we compare what's happening on the Ethereum network to any of the other networks out there, it's just night and day. Almost 700,000 people downloaded the Ethereum crypto dev package versus for Solana, it was 143,000. For Polkadot, it was 37,000 and it goes down from there. So we've got an increasing number of users. We've got an increasing number of developers and an increasing number of apps that are being built on Ethereum. But what we also have is increasing institutional buy-in at a very rapid clip. We've got hedge funds, we've got major institutional banks like JP Morgan, buying in and offering Bitcoin and Ethereum to their clients. We've got institutions trading crypto futures and even a couple of crypto futures ETFs being listed. Now, in Canada, there's actually crypto spot ETFs. They haven't been approved yet in the US, but if they are approved, that's gonna be another demand catalyst for cryptocurrency and of course for Ethereum. We've also got increasing demand on the Ethereum network from layer twos, which are blockchains that are settled onto Ethereum for the security but that operate separately so that they can have cheaper and faster transactions. As you can see here, there's almost $7 billion locked in layer twos that are built upon Ethereum, and that number has increased by 20% over the last month. And if we're comparing daily active users on alt layer ones, for example, Solana, to layer twos that are built on Ethereum, for example, Polygon, you can see that Solana has 180K daily active users, while Polygon has 270,000 daily active users and 10x the number of active developer teams. And moving forward, Ethereum scaling solutions like Polygon or Arbitrum are only projected to continue to grow, which is gonna increase that demand pressure on the network. Okay, and one final point about how the demand for Ethereum is rapidly increasing is related to the rise of VCs, venture capitalists, and private investors that are pouring money into the crypto space and of course into Ethereum. And as you can see from this chart here, the numbers are just going through the roof. So to wrap it up, when we look at the demand side, what are we seeing? 
rapid increase. But what about the supply side? Well, as it turns out, Ethereum supply is actually decreasing and it's only going to decrease at a faster and faster rate over the next six to 12 months. First of all, the amount of ETH that's locked in staking pools has been steadily increasing and it's going to spike after the merge happens and the staking rewards go up. And the reason why this is decreasing the current supply or liquidity of Ethereum is that when people stake their ETH currently, you can't withdraw it. Or at least you won't be able to withdraw it until after the merge happens and probably not until six to eight months afterwards. And I'm gonna get into that in a couple of minutes because that's also another major catalyst that affects this whole picture. But because so many people are staking their ETH right now and taking it off the market, and as of the last data point here, over 10 million ETH has been staked. Also, some people might just be withdrawing their ETH from exchanges and just holding it. But as a result of that, there's only 11.3 of the total Ethereum supply that's actually circulating right now that's liquid, that you can actually buy and sell. And that is the lowest level since September of 2018. But honestly, that's just the tip of the iceberg because this next part is actually insane. If we look at this website here, ultrasound.money, you can see that currently 5.4 million ETH per year is issued to proof of work miners. These are the people that are validating Ethereum transactions right now under the proof of work system. So 5.4 million new ETH is issued every single year. Well, once the merge happens and you can simulate it by hitting this nice button here, you can see that the amount of new ETH being issued is gonna go down to 500,000 per year. From 5.4 million, to 500,000. That is a reduction of over 90%. Additionally, under the proof of work system, miners that take this 5.4 million in new ETH issuance are probably selling a pretty significant portion of that to cover their mining costs, the electricity, the cost of the equipment, and so on. But once the merge happens and Ethereum moves from proof of work to proof of stake, that's not gonna happen for two reasons. First of all, proof of stake validators won't need to sell nearly as much ETH to cover their costs because the amount of energy that's required to do proof of stake is far, far less than the amount of energy that's required to do proof of work. On top of that, proof of stake validators won't even be able to withdraw any of their rewards for up to six to eight months post merge, which is when the next hard fork is gonna happen. And this is what I was talking about before because people that are staking ETH right now to be a validator by themselves or to join a staking pool will not be able to withdraw any of their ETH or their rewards for approximately six to eight months after the merge. And this is the point that I really have to emphasize because this is the most important part of this whole supply demand equation. But think about this, for a period of maybe six or eight months, there is literally going to be zero new ETH coming on the market, zero ETH issuance, zero selling pressure. That's never happened before, ever. Even with the Bitcoin halvenings, the decrease is not nearly as significant. This is essentially three Bitcoin halvenings happening all at once. And you can ask an economist or you can ask anybody that has common sense, but what happens when supply dramatically decreases while at the same time, demand dramatically increases? Well, price goes up. Now, on top of the economics of Ethereum, which are obviously very bullish, there's two other reasons why I think ETH has a very bright future. And the first relates to its security. And what I mean by that is that post-merge ETH is gonna become even more secure because it's becoming even more decentralized. And as the number of validators increases, and currently as of the time of this recording, there's around 325,000 active validators. But the more validators there are, the greater the security of the network is because it makes it even more difficult for any one bad actor to try and overcome or overpower the total network. And so with all these validators currently and over 10 million ETH staked and with both of those numbers projected to skyrocket after the merge because the staking rewards are gonna grow making it even more attractive for people to stake their ETH and to become a validator, well, the security of the network is only gonna keep getting stronger. And that is very bullish for the future of the community because it means that no single person can have an outsized impact on it. And the third and final reason why I think Ethereum has a very bright future is that the environmental impacts are going to decrease dramatically after the merge happens. Now, if we look at this chart here, you can see that the energy consumption of Ethereum has already peaked and it started to go down slightly. Well, after the merge, there's going to be a precipitous drop and it's going to be probably 95 plus percent less than it is now. In fact, some people think that Ethereum's energy consumption could drop by over 99%, which would be 
incredible, obviously. And there's two main reasons why this is extremely bullish for ETH. The first reason is just purely economic or incentives based, but it's gonna cost way less to be a validator. So that means that people's profits of actually being validators of securing the network and transacting on the network are going to be higher. The second reason why Ethereum's decreasing energy usage is super bullish is that politically speaking, it's gonna become much more acceptable. And we see tons of criticism of Bitcoin, of Ethereum or other cryptocurrencies regarding how much energy consumption they actually entail. And on websites like this, you can see the carbon footprint of Ethereum and you can see that, you know, Bitcoin Bitcoin and Ethereum together take up as much energy as entire countries. And so by decreasing the amount of energy consumption, Ethereum can silence some of the critics that say that since it's an environmental liability, it needs to be regulated or even completely canceled altogether. Well, by taking that off the table, we are securing the future of the Ethereum network in a much more sustainable way. And so that altogether is why Ethereum is my highest conviction crypto investment. And in fact, it's one of my highest conviction investments altogether. But now let me tell you what my plan is for my Ethereum investment over the next 12 months, but also long term. Well, to put it in the simplest terms possible, what I'm going to do with my Ethereum investment is just continue buying, holding and staking some, but not all of my ETH. And the best way to do that is by signing up for an account with Newton, the sponsor of today's video. Newton is a Canadian crypto trading platform that I personally use because it's perfect for my buy and hold strategy. Newton is low cost because they don't charge commissions on trading and because they don't have any fees whatsoever for deposits or withdrawals to and from the platform. In fact, they even cover up to $5 of gas or network fees for you once you're ready to withdraw your crypto to a cold storage wallet. So what I personally do is I'll go on the Newton app, I'll buy some ETH with it, I'll wait until I have enough to make a withdrawal to my ledger, and then I'll see when the gas fees on the network are lower than that covered $5 limit, and I'll take it off to my cold storage. A couple other great features of Newton as a crypto trading platform is that they offer both market and limit trading. The platform also has high liquidity, low bid ask spreads, and of course, it's not only Ethereum that you can trade on Newton, but also 60 plus cryptocurrencies and coins, and it seems like they're continually adding new ones. So if you do want to try out Newton, I highly recommend it. There's gonna be a link in the description box that if you sign up with that and trade over 100 Canadian dollars worth of cryptocurrency, you'll get a bonus $25 for free. Now back to my ETH investing plan. In the short to medium term, I'm going to be buying up ETH anytime I see an opportunity to lower my cost basis. And I'll probably continue buying it up to maybe 5,000 US dollars per ETH. At that point, I might set my limit and see what happens because of course it does fluctuate and it's not necessarily going to go straight up. But what if there's a crash? Because of course, even if things look extremely bullish for Ethereum, if the macro trends are not favorable or if there's a global recession, you never know what could actually happen with the price. Well, let's say there is a crash. Let's say ETH drops by 50% from today's prices or even more. What am I gonna do? Am I gonna panic sell? Am I gonna stop staking and sell my liquid staking ETH tokens? No, absolutely not. What I'll do is continue to dollar cost average and to build up my position because in the long run, I honestly think that the future is extremely bright for Ethereum. And let me leave you with one last thought. As of right now, Ethereum is currently number 20 in terms of its global market cap as compared to other assets. And it's behind things like gold, it's behind Bitcoin, and some of the biggest companies in the world like Tesla, Alphabet, Apple, etc. But with the amount of upside potential that ETH has, I seriously think there's some room to climb the ranks here. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you might also like this one or this one. See you later and have a great day.